I'm going to show you a demo on scope we're gonna import a uh, data from SQL Server and place it on the Hadoop distributed file system and Hive and I'm also going to use Hive uh, to do the querying on the data imported you can try it with big uh, that will be more interesting as well so before we get started I'd like to show you the database that I'm going to import from SQL Server onto the Hadoop distributed file system and Hive so the database name is called ScoopDB and uh, I'm just going to show you a sample so I'm going to import this particular table called employee with all these uh, columns onto the Hadoop distributed file system so whatever data you're, you're seeing here you'll be seeing that on Hadoop as well so now let's get on to Hadoop um, I have installed a single node cluster on my system it's a fully distributed system and uh, I'll show you how to how to get started with it so now let's start Hadoop so you can see the name node has started the secondary name node job tracker the task tracker so now Hadoop is running we need to make sure scope is running as well so this is the command to start scoop it's scope help so now we know that Hadoop and scoop is running so before I show you the transformation or the ETL process I'd like to show you where I've installed scoop uh, the Hadoop installation is pretty simple you can find it on Google uh, I'll just show you where I've installed scoop you need to download scoop and save it in the same location where your Hadoop is so my Hadoop is inside user local and here you can see Hadoop so I have uh, installed scoop here so now let's get back to the terminal and um, it's just pretty simple for you to establish a connection with the SQL Server you need to make sure you have uh, installed the SQL Server driver or the MySQL driver or any um, relational database driver for that matter it could even be a NoSQL or it could even be an Excel file or whatever it is you can uh, do ETL and you can bring the data onto Hadoop provided you have the driver because for Scoop to connect with the relational world you need a connector or a driver so in my case I have um, installed the SQL Server driver inside scoop lib and here you can find the SQL JDBC driver so I have installed this JDBC SQL Server driver from Apache site and I have installed it within scoop lib folder so this is where you need to place it and now let's get started so um, I'm just gonna see if scoop is making the connection with SQL server so let's first see if the databases on SQL server are getting listed so the command is scoop list databases connect JDBC SQL Server and this is the IP address I'll show you how uh, you can find out your IP and this is the port, port number on which SQL Server is listening and this is the username and password of my SQL Server so this is the SQL Server authentication for my SQL Server so you can find out uh, this IP basically by getting on to your SQL Server configuration manager so here uh, just right click on just make sure first if your TCP IP is enabled and then right click get onto properties go to your IP addresses and you can see all the IP addresses that are possibly available so my SQL server is running on this IP this is the TCP port on which it's listening 
so that's the reason I've entered this IP and the port number here uh, I hope this command is clear so now what it will do is it will list all the databases on my SQL server just give enter and here we go we have all the databases that are currently present in my SQL server and as I told you scoop DB is the database you're gonna work on and it is available now I'm going to import the data from scoop DB onto Hadoop uh, before I do that I'd like to tell you that um, I'm going to create a new directory on the Hadoop distributed file system so this is the HDFS and I'm going to show you the available directories here I'm going to create a new directory called employee and I'm going to import the data from SQL server employee table and I'm gonna put it here in the employee directory that I'm gonna create so this is the code for it let's copy it okay so I'm gonna use scoop import command uh, just remember the previous command we used was scoop list databases and the command that I'm going to use now is scoop import so basically the previous command didn't do the transformation process it just connected with SQL server and listed the databases this particular command is now going to perform the ETL process or it's going to or let's say it's going to import the data from SQL server onto Hadoop so it, the command is pretty simple it's, it's scoop import connect shady bc sql server the same ip address the port number and the database name has to be mentioned here the username and password of your sql server and this is the table employee and uh, which i'm going to import and i'm going to create a new directory called employee and the data will be imported onto that directory so we can see that right now So now the map reduce will start spinning. And in a few seconds the data will be imported. So yes, we done. We've transferred the data from SQL Server. So let's go and see if the data is imported. King, okay. just refresh it. Yes, and you can see the employee directory being created here. And this is the data. The employee data on SQL Server is now inside Hadoop. Now I'm going to show you the same ETL process uh, on Hive. The main reason why I'm using Hive is uh, so that I can execute some queries and show you so that it you know, makes the learning more interactive. As I said, you can try this on Pig as well. So here's the code for the Hive import process. Uh, the command is uh, very much the same. It's a scope import connect SQL server, it's JDBC SQL server, uh, same IP address, port number, the database name, scope DB, username, password, table employee, which is going to be imported, and this is where there's going to be a slight difference. You just have to give Hive import, and the data will be imported from SQL server onto your Hadoop. 
just give enter and the map reduce process will start spinning again and once this is done you can get on to hive shell and you can execute the queries that you want and you can manipulate the data basically and then you can push the data from Hadoop back to the relational world any RDBMS for that matter and you can perform analysis with your existing BI tools Okay, so the Hive import is complete. Now we can get on to Hive simply by typing Hive. Just get on to it and let's see if the employee table is imported. But before I do this, I would like to first get on to the Hive directory. So this is the HDFS as I told you. Just get on here. Go to user. Sorry. Okay. Get in get on to hive. And you will notice that the employee table has been imported here. After we gave the command, the data has been imported into hive. So now, when you give this command show tables, the employee table has to be listed. Okay, so you can see uh, the employee table. Uh, this is another table uh, which is presently inside my hive. So now, let's execute this query. Select star from employee and you can find the data here same as what was in SQL server and now you can just do any querying on this data I'd like to show you the describe command so you can notice that all these uh, variables have been captured onto Hadoop as string mainly because in SQL Server I have given all these as varchar um, so Hadoop takes it as string basically and now I'll execute another query and show you just a very simple one where we're gonna list the employees who are managers alone Similarly, you can perform a lot of querying, you can do a lot of analysis, manipulation on the data that you've imported. So you can see the map reduce is done. And the employees who are managers alone are listed here. Once you give quit, you can come out of Hive and you're back. So now let's get on to Hive. You can see the data within Hive. And uh, I'd also like to tell you that when you install Hive, you need to do it the same way like how I explained about the scope installation basically you need to save hive in the same place as where your Hadoop is in your file system so as I told you my Hadoop is within the user local Hadoop so this is where so in the same location is where my hive and scoop is all installed I hope this demo is useful. Thanks for your time.